Welcome to the 26th lecture on calculus. So in the previous class we have discussed the definition of differentiable functions along with examples. In this lecture we will discuss some properties of differentiable functions. So for example we will see the relation between differentiable function and continuous function and we will also see the relation between differentiability and algebraic operations. So we, we will first recall the definition of differentiability. So you consider a function f from this open interval a comma b to the set of real numbers r and c is, an, is a point in this open interval and c is a point in this open interval then this function f it is called differentiable at c if this limit exists and what is this limit so this is limit h tends to 0 f of c plus h minus f of c by h and if this limit exists then that limit is called the derivative of f at c and we denote it by f prime of c or df by dx of c or dy by dx of c where y is f of x and the derivative of f if it exists uh, derivative of f at c it is just f prime of c that is notation and by definition it is this one and this is another interpretation for the derivative of f at x equal to c and here is another remark the existence of this limit it is equivalent to that that both left hand uh, limit and right hand limit both exist and these are same okay and here is the relation between differentiable functions and continuous functions so we will prove here that every differentiable function is continuous so you consider a function from this open interval to the set of real numbers r and it is differentiable at a point c where c is a point in this open interval then f is also continuous at this point c. So differentiable at c it implies continuous at c. Okay. Let us prove this theorem. You consider this function and since it is differentiable at c so this limit exists. So it is limit x tends to c f of x minus f of c by x minus c. And then uh, we have to prove that f is continuous at c. So this statement it is equivalent to prove that limit x tends to c f of x it exists uh, it exists and it is same as the function value at c f of c. So we consider this difference and limit x tends to c. So limit extends to c of this difference uh, it, it we can write in this way so both numerator and denominator we can multiply by x minus c. So then it is product of these two function and since limit this limit exists so uh, limit of this thing it exists and limit of this thing so this is x minus c this is a polynomial okay. So limit extends to c uh, of this polynomial it also exists. Uh, therefore, so by the relation between limit and product of functions, we have this equality. Okay. So limit of this product, it is just this uh, product of the limits. Okay. Now this limit, it exists and it is same as the uh, derivative of f at c. And what is this limit? So as x tends to c, limit of this thing, it is 0. So ultimately we are getting some, some number times 0, so it is, it is 0. So therefore limit of f of x as x tends to c, it exists and it is same as this function value f of c. And therefore this function f is continuous at c. So this theorem is saying that if your function on this open interval, if it is con this theorem is saying that if this function on this open interval, if this is differentiable at a point c, then it is also continuous at that point. What about the converse of this theorem? The converse of this theorem, it is not necessarily true. The converse to the above theorem is not necessarily true. Example given that you consider this function f of x equal to absolute value of x for all x belongs to r. Then one can prove that this function is continuous at every point of r but this function is not differentiable at this point 0. So in the previous class we have discussed this example. One can prove that if uh, you consider a point C uh, that is positive then uh, derivative of f at C it exists and it is same as 1 and if you consider a point C that is negative real number then also derivative exists and it is same as this minus 1. 
and at c equal to 0 derivative does not exist because at c equal to 0 this right hand limit it is same as 1 and this left hand limit it is same as minus 1 so this thing we have discussed in the previous class so therefore since left hand limit it is not same as this right hand limit so f is not differentiable at 0 okay but uh, one can prove that f is continuous at 0 in fact f is continuous at any point okay on the x axis how to prove that so you can use the sequential criteria so if you consider a sequence uh, of real numbers which converges to c then this function value f of xn it is just absolute value of xn it converges to absolute value of c okay so limit extends to c f of x it is same as f of c for any point for any point uh, in the set of real numbers for any point in the set of real numbers so this function it is continuous at any point okay but it is not differentiable at 0 so it is saying that continuity does not necessarily imply uh, differentiability and here are the relations between differentiability and algebraic operations so this theorem oh, we have proved uh, in case of limits and continuous functions but uh, same results holds to uh, same results hold true for differentiable functions you consider two differentiable functions from this open interval a comma b to the set of real numbers and suppose both are differentiable at a point c in this open interval then their sum that is also differentiable at c and this derivative of this sum at c it is just given by the sum of the derivatives and this f minus c that is also differentiable at c and derivative of f minus c at c it is just uh, this difference between the derivatives and if you consider a, a real number r then r times f that is also differentiable and the derivative at c it is just r times the derivative of f at c and what about the product product is also differentiable at c and in this case derivative of this product at c it is given by this thing so it is derivative of f at c times g of c plus uh, f of c times derivative of g at c and what about this ratio Th this is also differentiable at c uh, provided this g of c is non-zero okay and derivative is given by this ratio so it is g of c times f prime of c minus f of c times g prime of c divided by g of c whole square so using the relation between limits and uh, algebraic operations one can prove these three statements easily and using the relations between limits and algebraic operations or if you if you use the definition of uh, differentiability one can get these three statements easily uh, let me give the sketch of the proof of this fourth statement okay so here you consider two functions both are differentiable at c that means the, both the limit exist both the limits exist okay we want to prove that this limit as x tends to c this limit exist okay so you just write this numerator in this way so you subtract and add by this term f of c times g of x and then you take common g of x from this term so it is g of x times this thing plus f of c times this thing so from here you can take common f of c and then uh, if you take limit as x tends to c then you can uh, see that since g is differentiable at c so g is continuous at c so therefore limit extends to c of g of x it is just this value and if you take limit as x tends to c of this term it, it gives this derivative at c and so this is just constant and limit of this thing as x tends to c it is giving this g prime of c so ultimately if you take limit of this thing as x tends to c you will get this value so derivative uh, of this product at c it exists and it is given by this and similarly one can prove this formula also i will leave this thing as exercise it, it is a bit non trivial and then here are some examples so uh, in the previous class we have uh, computed this thing that the derivative of uh, this function f of x equal to x power m uh, 
it is given by uh, this thing m times x power m minus 1 and using this result and the previous theorem uh, one obtains the following result so if you consider a polynomial function so it which is given by this polynomial where coefficients are uh, real numbers then its derivative at uh, this point x it is given by this thing so you just use the relation between differentiability and uh, algebraic operations so this thing it is just combination of uh, summation and scalar multiplication right so using this result and using the previous theorem one can get this one what about uh, this ratio derivative of this ratio uh, this rational function so you consider two polynomials uh, where coefficients are real numbers okay and then your function is defined by this ratio of course this is defined on uh, those points so this is this is defined for those points uh, for which this q of c is non zero so this denominator should be non zero and then if you consider a point c such that q of c is non zero then uh, derivative of f at c it exists and it is given by uh, this thing so it is derivative of this polynomial at c times q of c minus p of c times derivative of q at c divided by q of c whole square okay where q of c is non zero and here is the chain rule so you consider two functions uh, one is defined on i so this some open interval i and j is another open interval so f is defined from i to r and j, g is defined from j to r and you have this relation that f of i is contained in j so that means image of f it is contained in j so of course then you can define the composite function g compose f of x in this way g of f of x and then what can you say about differentiability of uh, this function so this theorem is saying that you consider a point c in this domain of f and suppose f is differentiable at c and also g is differentiable at f of c then this theorem is saying that this composite function g compose f it is differentiable at c and this derivative is given by this formula and this we call chain rule of derivative okay so this is g compose f its derivative at c it is given by uh, the derivative of g at f of c times derivative of f at c okay so let's use this chain rule to compute uh, the, the derivative of this function uh, at any point okay when x is non zero okay so how to compute this thing or how to get this thing so you consider uh, two functions okay and this function we want to think it as a composite function okay so you know that derivative of this thing the sin x it is just cos x uh, and derivative of 1 by x it is minus 1 by x square okay so let's assume these two results and using these two results let's uh, prove this equality okay so you consider f of x it is 1 by x for all x not equal to 0 and g of x it is sin of x for all x real numbers then this function it is just uh, this one I should write that this one it is just g compose f so first you apply f then you get 1 by x and then you apply g so it is sin of 1 by x and what is the derivative so g compose uh, f its derivative at c it is given by this formula okay so f first it is derivative of g at f of c times derivative of f at c so derivative of f at any point it is given by this thing so it is giving this one and then derivative of g at f of c so uh, if you point if you consider this point so let me write it here so g compose sorry let me write it here so g compose f prime of c so it is g prime of f of c times f prime of c so what is f prime of c so it is let me write g prime of f of c what is f prime of c it is minus 1 by c square and what is uh, derivative of g at f of c it is cos of 1 by c okay 
minus 1 by c square. So ultimately you will get the derivative at any point x it is given by this thing from here. Okay. And that's all. I am 